Australia's workforce is moving towards a more non-working population more than ever before as a proportion. We have an aging population and this has been known for some time. This was put in place to alleviate pressure on the Australian government's budget and allow people to fund their own retirement. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Reese. In today's video, I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the pension is and why it's important to understand that it may not be around forever and how you can prepare now for if that day ever comes. I guess the million dollar question is, is would a government ever commit the political suicide of reducing or completely removing social welfare or better known as the pension. It's estimated that the Australian government will spend about $190 billion on welfare between 2019 and 2020. Now that is a significant number and a significant amount of money to come out of the Australian federal budget just to support the aged. And this number is only set to grow in the coming years, ultimately resulting in the taxpayer carrying the burden to allow or pay for the aged to live. In 2018, the age from which you could start claiming the pension increased from 65 years old to 67. Now, it doesn't seem like a long time, but two years is a pretty long time to continue working when you were ready to retire and get that sweet, sweet welfare. But this was only the beginning. As more people enter retirement, this number may increase even further. Every year now, more and more people are entering retirement. At the same time, those entering the workforce now are those who were born in low birth rate years, which were the 1990s. I myself fit into that category, meaning there's a smaller workforce supporting a larger number of retirees. Now, this could have a few possible outcomes and most of them are pretty detrimental to our society. The first is us seeing a significant increase in the pension age anywhere up to 80 years old meaning you can't retire and be funded by the government until you're 80. Could you imagine working a full-time job until you're 80 years old? I don't know if it's something that would actually be viable for elderly people to actually do into their elderly years. Another factor that may come into play is the exemption of your family home being a tax offset. Meaning if you sell your family home, you do not need to pay tax on the sale of that. It doesn't count as income and it, the profit doesn't matter. If you profit greatly, good on you you win in this scenario. But the problem here is that the government may now make it a taxable asset, meaning if you sell your family home and make a profit, you're gonna pay tax on that money. And that money will go towards funding the aged and ultimately you're the person who loses. We may see removal of the family home being tied to the asset test. So as an example, a single homeowner can have up to $578,250 of assessable assets and receive a part pension. The same goes for a single non-home owner where the lower threshold is $785,000. For a couple, the higher threshold is $869,000 for someone who owns a home and it's a million dollars for a non-home owner. So there's four categories here and each category is the eligibility criteria for a couple or a single to qualify for the pension based on how much they have in assets. We may see things like large penalties being introduced for the aged who live in homes which are too large for them because realistically, if a single person lives in a five bedroom house, why do they need that? Which ultimately will take away from a person's rights to be able to live where they want or live in a house that they earn. We may see closure of loopholes and I personally believe this one will come to fruition, which is, where people manage their assets based on their age by maybe giving money to their children or giving money away to charity in order to qualify for a pension and live off of that for the rest of their days. So there may be a lower threshold where you can no longer break up your assets from the age of 55 because they know that retirement's approaching and they see what you're doing. So they'll say, no, you don't qualify for a pension because you kind of cheated the system. And the easiest way to put pressure on people who are looking at retiring is to stop them from being able to access their super from anywhere between 70 years old and 75 years old, meaning that money stays in that account or in that fund until they hit that age, meaning they need to work before they can access all the money they've saved up over their career. Whether you're 19 or 60 years old, it doesn't matter. Planning ahead is always going to be in your best interest. You don't need to have everything figured out from the beginning 
but just thinking about it is a baby step. It's the very beginning. It's where you can go, how can I maximize what I'm doing now in a way that will benefit me in 40 years? It still may be years away, but putting a plan in place is gonna benefit you greatly no matter what. It's also gonna give you the best opportunity to live a healthy financial retirement. Estimating how much money you will need for retirement is the very first step. And understanding that will guide you into the practices you put in place to achieve that goal. Figures show that to live out the rest of your days in a comfortable but frugal lifestyle from the age of 65, you would need approximately $40,000 per year, budgeted of course, to be able to survive. Keep in mind that this is assuming that you own your home outright and have good spending habits. So not everyone's gonna fall into this category and this is, as I said, an example the number that you will need will probably be much higher. But I'm just gonna talk very simple terms to paint the picture. This figure can be helpful when planning your retirement or planning your retirement strategies. Think about how you wanna live your life, where you wanna live your life, the situation you want to be in when you get to this point. And what you can do now is think of all of the income sources that you have or could have in the future to be able to fund this when the time comes. Now, I'm not saying to put away your life savings every single paycheck into your superannuation fund or put it away for a rainy day, but I'm making sure that you are thinking about it even ever so slightly so that you can build a fund or build your future retirement fund. So you need to think about all of your potential income sources over the next 40 years. Now you couldn't possibly name every single one and plans definitely will change, but just actually thinking about how you're going to fund this, whether it be through your job, through your superannuation account, or through a business that you start up, it's gotta be at the back of your mind. And you have to understand that you will have a continuously changing life over the next 40 plus years. Some of the ones to definitely consider and definitely be aware of are the following. So voluntary contributions to your superannuation account. So this can be done in the form of salary sacrificing through your employer. So setting it up in a way that you can contribute before you pay tax off of your salary into this super fund. So this is separate to what your employer needs to pay. Each employer in Australia needs to pay 9.5%. You can contribute more than that all the way up to $25,000 per year. So if your employer gives you $10,000 a year through the mandatory super fund, you can also sacrifice another 15,000 if it's something you have the ability to do and it's something that you want to do. The rate that it's taxed at isn't even the greatest benefit. Compound interest and investing is a real thing. So building up a fund over the course of 40 years is going to be huge. If you are considering salary sacrificing, I encourage you to watch my video, which I've linked in the description below, which explains a little bit more about the topic. Another way to go about doing it is to invest in the share market by yourself. Now this is usually referred to as gambling, but it's not gambling if you do it consistently. My current investment strategy is to invest around about $12,000 into the share market every year. Now, if I can keep this up for my entire career, we're looking at a large lump sum of money at the time that I retire. I invest into index funds because they are really diversified. They don't require a lot of management and it's something that I can just leave for almost ever. I really don't need to do anything with them. The money itself, even if the returns are small, will still give me returns over the next 40 years. Or so they should. Just as an example, from the age of 25, which is where I'm sitting at right now, this portfolio, if I was able to continue it, at a 4% gain could be worth a staggering $1.2 million at the age of 65, which is when I intend to retire. This is something that I will definitely track over time and I will make videos about how I'm investing and how I'm continuing to grow over the years because it's something that I want to track. It's something that I want to understand and it's something that I want to see how I go with because if it proves to provide results, I will be another statistic in the many people who have followed this model and actually retired off of the funds that they have continued to build and grow over the course of their career. The other reason why I invest this way currently is because I do not claim to be an expert with investing. It's something that I'm going to learn about and grow with over the course of the next 20 years of my life. And as I get more confident in this space, I intend to make videos about how I'm investing, why I'm investing the way I am and how it's working for me. But back to the topic at hand, lastly is just savings in general. To give you perspective, putting away $25 every single week for the course of a career could result in you 
having $60,000 at retirement, which would literally offset an entire year of expenses for you. This $25 sits in my emergency account and hopefully I'll never have to use it. And if I don't, come retirement, I'm gonna have a sweet little pool of savings which I can draw upon slowly as I need to. It's the little things like this that if you put a few of them together, you're gonna guarantee yourself to be in a really good position at the very beginning. $60,000 isn't a 20 year retirement plan, but it's effortless for me to do it now. It's something that I should be able to consistently do over the next 20 odd years. And it's something that definitely will pay off and when I get to that age and I have access to that money. Final thing I wanna cover is you need to ask yourself if you're gonna enter retirement being debt free. This is something to definitely work towards and building good habits now and understanding your money and making it work for you is the most important thing you can do if you're young, especially because you have all the time in the world, but all the time in the world will eventually run out. So I encourage you to get it right now. Nearly four in five people between the age of 50 and 65 move into their retirement still owing money in some form or another, maybe credit card debt, house debt, it doesn't really matter, it's debt. It's money that you still don't have access to because you owe it to someone else. Building good habits to mitigate this occurrence happening is in your best interest. I encourage you to find ways to pay down debt as fast as you can and make sure that it doesn't consume you. Simply thinking about this now will prepare you and give you opportunities for your future. No more to it. It's a conversation, it's a discussion, and it's something that should be heard especially for young people who aren't even thinking about it or even have ever thought about it. I say this lightly because it's unfortunate for the older people who haven't really thought about it now, but the younger you are, the better position you are in to prepare for this. Put a plan in place and stick to it. Times will change and the plan will change, but make sure that you are making changes which are benefiting you more than what you were before. Make it work because you won't regret it in the future. Unless you win the lottery, and if you are fortunate enough to win it, good on you. Enjoy it, live your life and be happy, but make sure that you don't spend it all straight away and you live out the rest of your days being financially free, because at the end of the day, that's the goal here. You living happily without any stress, especially about money. I hope you learned something in today's video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.